application not responding. Perfect. We have had an incredible week out here. Now we're going to head back and edit. I'm going to show you how I stitched together a landscape panorama, and then I'm going to edit a couple wildlife shots. And I'm going to show you how I edit a Milky Way photo and my moonshot. All right, let's go. Come on, hurry. All right, let's dive right into it. So I'm gonna get started uh, stitching and editing the panorama that we shot over the lake. It's kind of a fun way to show how you can shoot extra wide if you don't have a lens that's like an eight millimeter for these huge expansive landscapes. So I shot a couple of them. Uh, I am going to just edit the first one here. No reason to get too fancy on it. You can see uh, how I shot it is I basically just shot left to right with a little bit of overlap between the frames. And that gives Lightroom a ton of extra pixels to choose from and overlap and stitch. And you'll end up, it's almost foolproof to be honest. If you don't try and line the edges of your frame up, you let them overlap a good amount, you can almost not mess it up. It's, it's amazing. So I just will two finger click or right click, go to photo merge and then panorama. It will take a second to think as it lines those up and stitches them. All right, so there we go. We got the full panorama. You can see there's spherical, cylindrical, and perspective. And if you drag the boundary warp bar, it kind of stretches it a little bit more vertically or not. And you can kind of, this is just to taste. This is literally, uh, this is where you get to have some artistic choice. There's no wrong answer. There's no right answer. Just which one looks better to you and then go for it. So I think I like the spherical perspective with a pretty good boundary warp. Uh, I do auto crop, just it basically removes the weird curved edges of the spherical projection and then I click merge. That'll take a second to stitch those together and then we're going to have a final image. And I clicked auto crop because it just kind of helps cut the original or the initial rectangle out of the image. But the first thing I'm going to do is crop again and that's just because that auto crop is going to give us a crazy like 3.9864 to one aspect ratio. And when you go to deliver it to a printer to get it printed or you wanna actually put it somewhere, you're going to have to crop it again because uh, paying for custom aspect panoramas is unbelievably expensive. So I'm probably gonna start by just cutting it to either a two to one or a three to one aspect ratio image. That's the first thing I'm gonna do when it's done. I'm going to go to the two to one ratio. It's gonna look kind of square compared to how wide this panorama really is. But that allows me to sort of trim this down. I like Mount Moran being dead center on this. The horizon line being right on the thirds line. Let's get Moran really lined up here. And that gives us a nice, like really nice symmetrical panorama. I think I'm even gonna bring it in a little bit tighter. So it feels like I'm getting rid of a lot of the image and it kind of feels weird sometimes because you're like, wow, you shot all of this huge panorama and you're deleting like probably 60% of it. But um, I'm thinking this is a pretty nice looking panorama. I'm happy with the way that looks. This has got some nice colors. So let's start with the edit. Uh, of course, this is a raw image. So everything is kind of flat and a little bit muted. And so. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start adjusting my exposure just to bring everything to where I want it. So I'm going to lift the shadows a little bit so that we can see some more of the detail on the mountains and bring the highlights down a tad and a little extra contrast. But then of course what we really need is some vibrance and some saturation to actually make those colors happen. Now sunrises are a little tricky because our eyes will see oranges and pinks and purples and, and basically the whole spectrum. Unfortunately, when you're editing that, you're gonna kind of have to choose. And so if you push the yellow slider over, you'll notice we get rid of a lot of the blues and pinks. And so I'm actually not gonna warm it up, but I am gonna mess with the tint and add a little bit more magenta into it. I, I really like the way the kind of bluish and magenta colors interplay with each other. Let's see here. Yeah, that's looking really good. I honestly might crop it a little tighter now that I'm getting into it. I think the mountains are still a little small in frame. The, the hero of the show is that faint rainbow that we got there and the clouds, and we just don't need all of that extra sky. It sort of detracts from the main hero, which is the mountains themselves. 
I am gonna add a little bit of clarity and a little bit of dehaze to it just to bring in uh, some punch to those, to those skies. Now, I will say you have to be very careful with those sliders. Too much clarity, here, let's just do it. You can see what it looks like. It's, it looks ridiculous. You lose a lot of the color on the mountains. It just, it looks fake. Um, same thing with dehaze. It looks like baby's first editing session. It's like the kind of thing you see on Facebook from somebody who took an okay iPhone photo and wants to make it dramatic. So you have to be careful with both of these. I'd be, I wouldn't go maybe more than like 15 on either of them unless you're in a very specific scenario. Uh, but again, use your best judgment. It's not one size fits all. Okay, all right, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna add a little bit of a vignette to it. Uh, I personally am a fan of vignettes. It sort of draws your eye towards the center of the image, uh, especially something like this where I specifically put Mount Moran in the center of the frame. It kind of helps draw the eye in. Adjust the exposure. And then now is when I'm gonna start doing a little bit more um, localized editing. So I see this rainbow off on the right. I think it looks amazing and I wanna try and draw that out. So I'm gonna make a brush. Uh, and then if you hold the option key on Mac, you can kind of delete your brush if you've gone a little far. It's a great way to sort of fine tune what you're looking for. brought it out a little bit more there. And then let's also select the sky. It'll do this automatically now. Lightroom has just amazing AI capabilities. And you can fine tune this brush uh, by adding and subtracting with this, but I'm gonna make a couple adjustments before I do that. So I'm actually gonna do a tiny bit more dehaze on that and then a little bit more saturation. We're being real subtle on the sky adjustments here. We're not trying to make it look too blown out, but we are trying to give it a little punch. Here we go, I think that looks pretty nice. All right, and I think that is good. I like it, I like the way that looks. I'm happy with it, and we're gonna move on. Okay. All right, let's edit a wildlife photo. I think we're gonna start with a group shot. This one's kind of fun. Um, this is a bunch of elk we saw yesterday morning. I love how almost every single elk in the frame is all looking the same direction. Uh, I'm gonna bring the exposure down a little bit. It looks a little bit high to me. And lift these shadows, kind of the same intro as the other one had. Just adding in a little bit more color, taking this away from uh, being a raw image into an actual edited shot with some color. This one doesn't need a whole lot. This was beautiful early morning light. Um, the animals are all sharp and in focus. It's what you get with an A7R5 on a 400 millimeter G Master. Everything's pretty much sharp. <laughs> Let's see here, I'm gonna add a little vignette again. Not too much. So the elk kind of go across the frame in this one. So you can't add too much vignette or you start to darken the elk on the edges. But uh, I do like that. Let me see what a little more warmth. No, I don't like that at all. Uh, nothing wrong with making a change and then deciding that was not for you. We're going to try one other thing and see how not for me it is. And that is a little bit of a radial gradient. This is one of my favorite tricks for early morning light to make it look just a little bit more early morning. So I added it up in the corner. I set my, my radius to 100. Uh, just, I want it all the way radius. And then I'm gonna warm it up a little bit and brighten it up a little bit. And what that does is it kind of mimics the early morning sun shining up from that corner. Um, it kind of just, it boosts that early morning feel beautiful. All right, so starting again from where we started and where we are now, it's pretty subtle. I didn't make any crazy changes here, but it brought out a little bit of the shadow detail. It kind of enhanced that early morning sun feel, 
And uh, I'm really happy with this. I think this is cool. You've got a little bit of like a misty ethereal feel. If we wanted, we could even add a little bit of a brush here um, to, to literally give it some early morning mist. I'm just gonna draw that in the back there. And I'm tilting that one down towards the blue to sort of soften it up, make it look a little bit more like early morning, like mist in the background there. Let's see, oh yeah, I like that. Perfect, that one is done as far as I'm concerned. So let's edit one more wildlife photo. I think let's, let's switch it up and let's do kind of a portrait style one, a little bit less environmental, and more of just those like dedicated portrait style shots that are so popular. Ooh, that one's kind of cool. I want one with a little personality though. This one's funny, look at him, he's eating, he's chomping away. It's sharp, it's in focus, we got some weird, grass stuck to his matted fur still kind of tells a story which as we talked about is always my goal with wildlife photography so um, this one's going to be a little bit of a tighter i might even crop this vertically because the, the background's not lending a whole lot to the image yeah that's great so you can see i like it you can tell he's coming out of winter he's losing that that winter fur coat Slimming down for summer, but just chowing down on this grass mouth is open a little bit of an action shot Which is what I always like um, The first thing with bison is they're dark So I think I metered this properly for the highlights, but the shadows are definitely a little bit underrepresented So I'm going to lift the shadows lift my exposure a tad um, And then add some saturation back in Now this is a tough white balance because it looks very yellow. It looks kind of weird in that regard, but this was five minutes from sunset. It's like the deepest evening light you can have. So it truly was that yellow, but I'm going to, I'm going to bring that back a little bit closer to neutral because it looks, it looks fake. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, that's looking great. Honestly, this is one that does not need a whole lot. Uh, one of the main things I like to do though, in this instance, um, the golden sunlight makes grass look very weird. And this is springtime. We want that grass to be nice and green, vibrant. So I'm gonna go down to this HSL color ta tab down here. And I'm actually in the yellow channel and I'm dragging it more towards green. And you'll see that it actually is interpreting the grass as a yellow, which is kind of what I was getting at there. So if I go just like plus 15 or 20 or so, um, towards the green side, it, it brings this a little bit more springtime, a little more vibrant, uh, and I personally prefer that. Let's see, do I wanna raise those shadows a little more for him? I don't think so. I kinda like that this one eye is so dark, and uh, in the shadow you get this really nice juxtaposition of the light and the dark on him. Uh, and I think that one might be done. I'm gonna add a, a hint of vignette again, cause it's sort of one of the things I like to do on almost every photo. I think we're good, that one looks great. I'm happy with it. And of course, uh, as I've said before, this is all personal preference. It's all your own stylistic choice. Don't forget that this is art. You might edit completely different than this and that is okay. Some people do a ton of editing and some people do very little editing. And there's also nothing wrong with making an edit and then walking away for an hour or two and coming back to it to see if you like it. It's all a learning process. I still re-edit photos from a year or two ago because I have learned and grown and I have changed my process as well. Um, but. In the meantime, I'd love to see some of your favorite wildlife and landscape shots in the comment below. Please drop those down there. I'd love to check them out and I'll see you around. <laughs> now it's my turn to walk you through some of my edits. Um, as you can see, I like to use a tablet, which just allows me to get a little more precision and it does kind of give it like a painterly feel, which I really like while I'm creating my images, um, especially for astrophotography. So let's walk through an astro photo first. This is one of the photos um, from last night actually, and it looks a little bit dark. Um, so I'm gonna brighten the exposure first. I'm just opening this up in Camera Raw through Photoshop, and we'll get into Photoshop after I make these sort of initial global edits. So I think maybe that looks pretty good. I do want to drag the highlights down a little bit because I don't wanna brighten the sky too much. 
Then maybe I'll raise the shadows a smidge. Um, and we can see over here on the right side um, where the moon was illuminating the foreground, which actually I think worked in my favor. You get to see a lot of detail in this hillside, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I think maybe I'll just turn up a little bit of vibrance just to get that going. And then, yeah, let's, I think that's about it. So I usually just do a few global edits in um, Adobe Camera Raw first, and then I bring it into Photoshop where I get into the specifics and where I can do more um, selective editing. First things first, I will apply some noise reduction because this is an astro shot, and even though I believe this was at like 1600 ISO, um, it's not super noisy, but it just makes the images look even crisper and, and much smoother. So first I'm going to not double click that. <laughs> I'm going to make a duplicated layer of my background. I'm going to make that a smart object by right clicking and hit convert to smart object. Um, and if you're not familiar with Photoshop, a smart object allows you to change edits that you've made. So if you don't make something a smart object, it's a permanent change that you make to that layer and then you can't go back and fix it if you decide you don't like what you've made. So filter, I'm going to be using a, uh, a plugin called Topaz Denoise. I'm just going to load this really quickly. This is um, a pretty affordable plugin that does a great job at eliminating and reducing noise. Right now, let's just do the sort of standard and I like to just see how it does on its own and it usually it does a pretty good job, but sometimes I'll need to go in and tweak it. Um, it looks like this might be doing a little bit more than I would like. Um, so it it's kind of making it look a little bit too fake, I think. So let's try low light instead and see how that looks. Mm. I'm not loving that one either. Let's see, severe noise. Definitely not. All right, well, let's just go with standard and then I'll reduce the noise a little bit, or the noise reduction. I think that looks okay. And then I'll hit apply. We'll let that process. And then since I did think it was a little bit much, what I can do also is lower the opacity of this layer. So it's blending in with the noisier image that's below the layer by dragging this little opacity slider in my layers panel to where I think it looks good. And I think that's pretty good. So it's at about 65%. So I'll turn that on and off so you can kind of see what it's doing here. Yeah, I think that looks good. When I'm First, looking at my astro images, I sort of start in two process or in two um, segments. I look at the foreground and then the sky separately. And I, I don't know really know why I do that. It's just sort of how my mind works. Um, I think I look at the foreground first because I usually want to bring that out a little bit more. And then I deal with the fun Milky Way later. So what I'll do is um, create two separate copies. So for this um, noise or topaz denoise layer, I'm actually going to convert it to a smart object again. And, and then if I need to edit, I can go into that smart object and edit again, but okay. Yeah, so there's a little bit of distortion on the left here with these trees. You can tell they don't quite match up. Um, so I will go, I'm going to merge these two layers by convert to smart object. So now everything is a single layer and I can edit from there. Okay, now there's a little bit of distortion over on this left side here with these trees. So if I go to edit, transform, distort, I can hold option, shift, and click this left uh, tab up here and drag it out toward the left side. And you'll see the top of the image is sort of moving toward the left and aligning. I'm gonna grab this bottom left one and drag it in a little bit now. And we'll see that the trees are starting to align on top of one another. But you'll notice on the edges here, um, we're missing some image. So I'll need to crop in a little bit, which is great. It's fine because I was planning to do that anyway. First, I'll brighten the reflection down here a little bit so that we can see more detail in this uh, mountain. So I'm going to go to curves adjustment 
and I'm just gonna click in the middle of my curve. So down here on the left are my shadows, up here on the right are my highlights. So these are sort of the mid-tones here, but I'm just gonna lift this a little bit. And then down here, I'm gonna lift these shadows a tiny bit so we can see more of the mountain and the reflection. But you'll notice that, of course, brightened the entire image. So I'm going to mask out the top part. So if I hit Command I, I can invert my image so that I'm, it's hiding the adjustment I just made. I can hit B for my brush tool. And let's do opacity 100%. And let's use a soft brush, a feathered brush, so that we don't get any hard edges. And I'll just sort of paint this in. Maybe I'll do 50% actually. All right, that might be a little bit much over here. So let's go back, we'll paint a little bit more in. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, and I do think I like leaving these trees silhouetted on the left. I think it's pretty interesting that um, the trees are completely black and silhouetted, but then you get these shadows and the light on the mountain on the right side. Um, I think it's a really nice um, contrast. So I'm gonna leave that. Uh, the tree is pretty dark over there. But I think I will brighten a little bit of the mountain itself on the right side. So I'll go ahead and add a little bit of brightness. And I'm just gonna do the mid-tones again. I think that's looking pretty nice. I do start with luminosity first. So I make any sort of light adjustments, um, contrast, things like that first, and then I move to color. Because if you start messing with color and then you go in and start adjusting your brightness and your darkness, um, it'll shift the colors as well. So it's always best to do colors last. I think now maybe let's work on the sky. So the Milky Way, because the moon was a little bit bright, is a little bit over um, last quarter. I've, the Milky Way is a little washed out, so I'd like to bring some of that detail back. I'm going to do that again by a curves adjustment, but this time there's this little um, slider up here that has a, a hand and it's a really useful tool. So if we click this, it'll give me an eyedropper. And you'll notice as I move my eyedropper around the screen, there are circles showing up on my curves line showing sort of where the luminosity is. So let's do the work on bringing some of the shadows down. So the darker part of the Milky Way here, I'm just gonna click right here and I'm gonna drag it down. And it's gonna darken sort of that area. And you'll notice it's darkening more of the image too, but we'll mask this out. Um, and then now the lighter areas of the Milky Way, I'll click here and drag, I'm gonna drag up. And so you can see it's already adjusting the color and it's really blue now. So what I can do is go to this normal over here for the layer style and I can go to luminosity. So it's only changing the brightness and the contrast of the image and no, not adjusting the colors. I think I'm gonna drag this up a little bit more. Okay, so now I want to mask just the Milky Way. So by hitting Command I, I can invert again and then come in and paint this in. I'm gonna use a pretty light brush, so I might just do something like 30%. That's a little too much. I'll do maybe 15%. Um, I'm gonna start over here too, because I want to, I want it to apply to more than just the Milky Way itself, so that it, it feels like um, it's the entire sky being adjusted, but I don't want the Milky Way, or the mountain to get adjusted as well. Kind of just painting this in here. It doesn't really matter if we get in the trees since the trees are just black anyway. And I'm gonna add a little bit to the reflection as well. Okay, and I'm going to do this several more times because I like to use sort of an additive approach, kind of like adding multiple different layers of paint to a painting. Let's do another curves layer again with this little slider. I'm gonna click on a slightly different area of the darkness of the Milky Way. Oops. Drag that down. And then for this one, I'm going to actually go in and individually paint in those darker areas of the Milky Way. So this is where it starts to get really selective. And it's, it's much easier to do this, um, of course, when you have a night where the 
moon isn't quite as bright, so it doesn't wash out as much of your, your Milky Way. But I'm just kind of going in here with a smaller brush, um, only at 10% opacity. So again, I'm using that additive approach because um, I don't want anything to be too heavy handed. We're just sort of bringing out these um, darker cl star clusters and gas clouds in the Milky Way. And then I might bring it out a little bit toward the edges so it blends in a bit with the sky that's right around it. Again, down here, I'll just kind of add a general darkness to that reflection so you can start to see it in the reflection as well. Okay, a little bit more over here so it blends in better. So we can see, so the city of Jackson is back here. And so you can see it's a little bit lighter down here. I don't mind that too much. Um, it kind of adds a nice little gradient, but I, I might darken it just a touch so it doesn't stand out quite as much. Now let's go in and do the same approach with the brightness of the Milky Way. So I'll click over here, drag up. Command I to invert my layer so I can go in and individually paint in these brighter areas. Again, with a really light brush so that I'm not making anything look too fake or fabricated, just kind of gently emphasizing what's already there. So in the core of the Milky Way, there's definitely a much brighter spot over here on this left side. And so I think it's okay to emphasize that a little bit more. I'm going to add a little more dimension right in this middle section here because it's a really just sort of a dark streak. I think it adds, it needs to have a little more depth. So I'm just going to make some little brightness touches in here. And that's something that I love about editing the Milky Way like this is that it feels like you get to have a little more of a creative say in how this turns out. It might be a touch dark, so I'm gonna re-go back to this uh, initial curves layer here. I'm just gonna brighten it a tiny bit more. But I wanna keep some of these darks dark, so I'm gonna leave um, one spot there for my shadows so that they don't get too bright. Now into color. I think um, it's, it's fairly blue, but it's actually pretty realistic to what I was seeing. The moon illuminating the foreground really helps to bring in some, um, some yellows, some nice hues to the grass here. Um, so it actually, I don't think, looks too blue. The sky, if anything, I might add a little bit of magenta just to give it sort of a little purpley touch. Um, I kind of like to do that with my Milky Way photos. So I'm going to add a color balance layer. And I'm just going to stick with the midtones here and just add a little bit of magenta. And then I might also add a little bit of red. All right, so let's sort of see where we're coming from by holding Option and clicking our initial background layer here. So these are sort of the edits that we've made so far. So we can see the Milky Way gets brought out, um, the mountain gets a little bit brighter, and it's got a little bit more dimension. And then the color's got a little bit more of a sort of red purpley hue. Um, I think that's looking pretty good. I think if I was going to really get into maybe uh, print this photo, want to make it a really large print, I might get into a little bit more finer details, but I think as a general sense, um, this is looking pretty good. So of course, save your work, and then let's go ahead and edit a moon photo as well. Okay, so this moon photo from the other day when we were out shooting, um, capturing it right in between those mountains. It's super, super exciting. I love this composition. So uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. I shot this a little bit wider um, just so that I had some crop capability later um, because I was shooting this on my A7R5. I knew that I had the resolution to um, crop in, but first, just for some global edits, I think um, I'm gonna add a little bit of warmth to it. This was at, I, I think it was about 9 a.m. So it wasn't the most beautiful golden light. So I'm just gonna fake that a little bit by just adding, uh, adjusting the uh, temperature slider over a bit and then also the tint a little bit over. Okay, 
Let's lighten the shadows of those trees so we can get some detail out and then a little bit of contrast as well. All right, so then open, it'll open in Photoshop. First, I think I need to get my crop figured out before I start getting in. So let's um, remove this sort of uh, shoulder of this other mountain on both sides actually. So let's right where it hits, I think will be a good composition. Yeah, and so the because it was the moon setting, quite a few, I guess it was like three hours maybe after sunrise. Um, so it blends in with the background a little bit. So we're gonna wanna make that pop. But first I'm going to brighten some of this foreground. So I'm gonna leave the moon for last, kind of like save the best for last, right? So curves layer and actually just gonna use this little slider up here again. So I'll click down here on these trees. I'm gonna brighten those up but you'll notice I start to lose some contrast on the mountain. So I'm gonna just use this sort of mid-tone here on this stone and drag that down. Mm, I'm actually not sure I love that. So let's just do this instead. Let's just drag this up. That's sort of the beauty of editing, right? It's sort of like trial and error, trying certain things. Sometimes it doesn't work out how you want it to, but that's okay. You'll figure it out eventually. All right, I think that looks pretty nice. And there could be a little more contrast in these trees on this mountain. Um, because I was using a telephoto lens, we've got some telephoto compression coming in here. So it looks like the trees in the foreground are right up against this mountain, but they're actually really far away. So we have some atmospheric perspective coming in where there's a little bit of haze uh, on the bottom of this mountain. So um, just gonna make a general S curve for those trees by dragging my highlights up a little bit and then the shadows down and then we'll go in and paint those in so it's selective. Command I to invert my layer. I'm gonna use my brush tool by hitting B. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I think the sky could have a little more contrast in it as well. Um, the great thing about Photoshop is that it's got a lot of um, really amazing and intuitive selection tools that you don't have to spend hours sort of mapping out and individually drawing and painting in. So select, let's go to select sky. And it's gonna make the selection for me. But it's not perfect first, like the first try. So I'm gonna go into select and select and mask to bring up uh, that selection tool again. And if we zoom in here, you can see there's a slight haze around the selection here because it's trying to sort of blend that in, but I want it to be a crisp separation. So if we go down here to the contrast, we slide this up. I'll just exaggerate it so you can see. It's really making that edge harsh, but I don't wanna go quite that far, but you'll see sort of like that haze comes back in and then it disappears. So I'm gonna to go to about maybe 25%. And then the shift edge here, so if I show you if we drag it toward the left, it's gonna extend that selection out. If I go toward the right, it removes it a little bit. And so I want it to blend in more, so I think I'm gonna go a little bit to the right, maybe like 10%, okay. That looks good. And then I'm going to add a curves layer, so I've got my selection. Now you'll see in my um, uh, layer mask here that it's only selecting the sky. And I'm just gonna add some contrast. So it's kind of faking like we're using a polarizer. Um, the sun wasn't in the correct spot in the sky for where I was shooting to actually get the effect of using a polarizer in the field, but we can sort of fake that in post. So now we've got a little more oomph in the sky and now let's brighten up that moon. Another curves layer just to add a little brightness on that mid-tone, and then I'm gonna drag the shadow down a little bit too so the, uh, the craters in the moon still stand out. Again, invert and it's brush to paint that in. Now, since there's a harsh edge of the moon, I am gonna make my brush a little bit harder, maybe like 60% hardness. If you hit the backslash key also, you can see the selection that you're making, um, which is pretty helpful to see if you've missed a spot or if anything looks a little off. 
Now I'm going to feather the brush for the bottom of the moon because it was a little bit um, past full moon, so it was waning a bit, and we've got a little bit of a feather edge at the bottom. Okay, and so as you can see, the that doesn't match up with um, the, the blue of the sky, so what we can do is change this layer instead of to be a normal layer style to luminosity. And now you'll see it's not that like vibrant, fake looking blue. I think I might add a little bit of brightness back right here though. Okay, and then as you can see, it looks a little bit too bright right there on the edge of the, uh, the bottom edge. So maybe 20% opacity, and I'm just going to erase a tiny bit of that so it blends in more. Let's turn that layer on and off so we can see. Yeah, maybe it's a little much, so we'll bring the opacity down. All right, maybe touch more. Let's turn it on and off so we can see. Yeah, it makes it kind of pop a little bit more. Let's just add some vibrance and then I think we'll be good. A little bit of vibrance, a little bit of saturation to make it pop, and yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Of course, my process is maybe different than yours. I know that a lot of people um, edit mostly in Lightroom. Not Photoshop is pretty intimidating, but it is such a powerful tool and you can do so much. You have a lot of creative freedom. So it's just something that I personally love. But if you like something that I've advised against or vice versa, that's totally okay. We all have our own opinions and they're all valid. So I just encourage you to play around, explore, try different things, um, and you'll eventually find your creative editing style. So let me know what your favorite Photoshop tool is down in the comments. There are so many that I probably don't even know about, so I'd love to hear what your favorites are. We have had such a great week here in Grand Teton National Park. We saw bears, we saw elk, we saw so many cool things. We shot astro photos, moon photos, wildlife landscapes, unreal. We hope that you feel like you've learned something and that you can take everything you've learned throughout the, the series out into the wild and uh, be inspired and maybe try something new that you haven't tried before. Uh, let us know where you think season two with us should be. We want to go somewhere really cool. We're not paying for it. Drop it in the <laughs> comments below. See you out there.